Jim Montgomery and Justin Bieber will forever hold a place in hockey history after coaching the winning squad at the 2024 All-Star Game. Not a sentence I ever expected to say, but here we are. And let's talk about it on a brand new episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Today is Monday, February 5th, and this episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. The 2024 All-Star experience is behind us. The Boston Bruins had a good chance of having a representative on the winning squad. Three out of the four teams had Bruins either playing for them or coaching. And it was Team Matthews, the host. Well, not really the host team, but the one featuring all the Toronto Maple Leafs that ended up winning, coached by our boy Jim Montgomery and the Biebs, Justin Bieber in his big furry polka dot coat. We'll talk about that here coming up, as well as some news and notes from practice on Sunday. And also a look at the week ahead. But first, a quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hoggy thoughts at Ian C. McLaren. And indeed, it was Jim Montgomery, the Boston Bruins bench boss, along with his son Colin and pop icon Justin Bieber, who helped Team Matthews win the All Star Game crown on Saturday at Scotiabank Arena in Toronto with a win over David Pasternak and Team McDavid. Montgomery said he's going to have bragging rights over Pasta, and he's just not going to let it live him down. Um, And why not? There was some chirping back and forth all weekend long. You had Thatcher Demko refusing to be hugged by Jeremy Swayman. You had David Pasternak chirping the Leafs squad after the game. Which is, you know, all a good fun, but also you look at Boston's history over the last little bit, not exactly um, reaching the pinnacle of hockey, losing in Game 7, 2019, losing in Game 7 last year. Um, Still more successful than the Leafs overall, but it'd be different if he had a Stanley Cup ring on his own finger. Anyways... He said it was fun to be chirping with his head coach. Uh, They ran into each other in the hallway before the game, and he walked with his head down, but Monty couldn't help himself and had to say something. Um, It was good that one of them could win, Pasternak said, and it was Team Matthews that got it done. Montgomery of coaching with Bieber said, you know what, the Biebs was right into it. Montgomery didn't really know what to expect, but you can tell he loves the game. He was recognizing the real creative plays, talking out loud about them. A born and bred Canadian just down the road here in Stratford. He played hockey growing up. He even took warm-ups prior to the first game. So he understood the intricacies of the game when someone made a really smart play. Montgomery added it was great to be around him. He was so into it. He had real emotion. And um, it was also cool to see Jim Montgomery there with his son. You think back to a handful of years ago and where Montgomery was personally, where his family was at because of those personal struggles. And then you come back here in Toronto and yeah, the all-star game doesn't quite have the same significance that it used to, but still a special moment. And uh, Montgomery even asked to wear the red and white polka dot coat 
but I guess the Biebs didn't want to share it, which was unfortunate. Pasternak had the chance to meet Bieber, take a picture with him before the game. Nearly five years following the infamous Not Today Justin comment on the singer's Instagram post when he was praying for a Maple Leafs win in Game 7 over the Bruins in 2019. Uh, Pasternak said he was glad to be able to get a picture with him in the room and on the ice. All the players appreciate him being a hockey fan helps the game when a person like that appreciates what they do. It's fun to see, and they're happy that he was able to make time for All-Stars. And same with the other celebrities, Will Arnett, Tate McRae, who, whatever you want to say about her, she had a fantastic performance and, and was a great personality all through the weekend. And then, of course, uh, Michael Buble was a bit of a wild card, but there you go. Now, it was Pasternak versus Swayman in the first round as Team McDavid completed a comeback. David Pasternak helped his team win with his signature shootout move on Jeremy Swayman to push them to the final. Uh, Swayman said, you know, it's great. He's got a couple go-to moves. He thought he was going to go glove side, but he pulled the Jake DeBrusque on him. It was a good move. Pleasantly surprised. He likes it when he does it for the team, and it's still working. Kind of that long wind-up and sweeping it in. Uh, He's got a really good move there where he can deceive the goalie with a glove shot or high blocker shot. And he said him and Pasternak even work on it quite regularly, and he can't believe he got him. But um, there he is. Swayman knows all his moves, Pasternak said. Um, But... There we go. He got a hat trick on the world championships against Swayman. Today he got two goals. Feeling he felt really confident after that one. Um he said he wanted to score on Swayman so bad. Uh Swayman did get him on a breakaway during the game, so it kind of evened out, although the shootout goal helped propel Pasta and company to the finals. Pasternak had Montgomery nervous every time he touched the puck. He was regularly skating with McDavid and Dreisaitl, which is just insane. One of the best trios you'll find in the NHL today. And um, unfortunately, they weren't able to get it done, but Jim Montgomery was, and the Bruins were uh, able to get a W at the All-Star festivities. I watched most of the games, didn't really watch the draft or the much of the skills competition, but I will say it was a better event than in years past. Uh, There will not be an all-star game next year as they will have the four nations cup with Canada, USA, Finland, Sweden taking part. And then I won't think there'll be one in 2026 either as NHL players will be going to the, uh, the Olympics that year. So could be the last all-star festivities we get for a little bit here. Um, enjoy it, take it for what it is, and uh, we'll see what's going on here. But now we get back down to business. Bruins were back at practice on Sunday, most anyways. Pasta, Swayman were not in attendance, uh, but right back in action tomorrow night. And uh, we'll talk about what Jake DeBrusque had to say after practice, what the lines looked like. Brad Marchand on the Olympics and take a look at the week ahead here as the podcast continues. Sleeper is the best place to be for daily fantasy sports here in 2024. And I love fantasy hockey. I spend probably way too much time thinking about it. And Sleeper has a fantastic app where you can win big, a hundred times big your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, David Pasternak will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves for Linus Allmark or Jeremy Swayman, plus minus and more. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. So win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper If I start paying attention, listen to Locked On Fantasy Hockey for all the tips you need, nail your picks, and start winning big. 
Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply, but that's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and Locked On has actually launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. After a week off last week for the bye week where many Bruins apparently went uh, off on vacation, the team was back at practice on Sunday in advance of tomorrow night's game against the Calgary Flames. And a few guys who were injured prior to the break were back on the ice for practice. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, most notably, we'll talk about him more in a moment. Matt Patra was back skating with Pavel Zaka and James Van Riemsdyk with David Pasternak getting some extra time to come back. And uh, Derek Forbort was back on the ice as well. So we'll see if all are available for tomorrow night's game. Uh, Swayman, I mentioned, got an extra day off to Garask suited up and was the e-bug in practice for the Bruins. Now, speaking of Jake DeBrusque, He is an impending unrestricted free agent, and he made it clear once again that he wants to stick around. He's in the final season of a two-year deal that he signed a couple years ago, again, when he had a public trade request out there. They signed him, perhaps with a view to moving him to give any suitors some contract certainty, but he stuck around and he's played Incredibly well and given the Bruins great value at that $4 million AAV. Started off a bit slow this season, but he's playing some of his best hockey as of late. And he doesn't really want to become a free agent. He said that on Sunday. He said, it's one of those things that I hope it gets done. I have an agent for a reason. I've obviously been with this organization for my whole career. I feel like I know where I stand in this lineup. I feel like I know where I am with the guys in the room and the city as well, end quote. Now, of course, he did have that trade request that, you know, appears to be water under the bridge at this point. And that was perhaps diffused by the decision to send Bruce Cassidy pack in and bring in Jim Montgomery. Again, he did get off to a slower start. Not overall, per se. He has developed this strong two-way defensive part of his game, which I deeply admire and respect and love seeing him out there killing penalties. Uh, He does have five points over his last five games, 25 points through 47 total games. And he said it's just one of those things where if he's playing his game, he can be anywhere and still be productive. And he's just trying to keep building on um, his most recent success getting traded before the deadline looks very unlikely. Even if he's not going to resign, the Bruins need him for the stretch run and he's open to a longer term contract. Everybody wants to be a Bruin for as long as they can. Uh, he doesn't have a number that he's set on specifically, but perhaps he'll get some contract certainty and it will come at maybe a bit of a lower AAV. Uh, The next stretch will certainly dictate what he is able to do, and it might behoove him to play out the rest of the season, have a strong playoff run, and just increase his value. Uh, Maybe the Bruins want to get things done now so that they don't get caught at the end of this hot streak or – You know, if he ends up blowing up here in the second half, having to pay him more than they could have if they had just signed him now. Um, Again, he expects to be back in action. It was something that 
has gotten better over the break. They're taking it day to day. Not quite sure exactly what the injury is, but he should be back in the lineup for tomorrow's game against Calgary and hopefully for many years to come. Over the weekend as well, it was announced that NHL players will be back at the Olympics. Who will be there from the Bruins? Well, we can pretty much pencil in Linus Allmark for Sweden, Charlie McAvoy and Jeremy Swayman for Team America. I think Swayman should be there. For Team Canada, Brad Marchand would love to be there, although perhaps the runway has run out for that. He may be a bit too long in the tooth at that point. He said it was really disappointing that guys got robbed of the last couple of Olympics. We know he starred 14 Canada at the 2016 world cup. Uh, Canada should have been there in 2018 should have been there in 2022. Those would have been prime opportunities for both Marchand and Patrice Bergeron to play together. They played with Sidney Crosby at the world cup. Um, Marshawn, 25-26 season. Um, I guess there will be an all-star game as an Olympic send-off for the players. According to the Hockey News, um, he'll be 37 by the time the next Winter Olympics roll around. And he'll have to continue to play at a high level to make a push to represent Canada on what will be, no doubt, a stacked roster but he did say it's a huge goal he's going to do everything he can to be there and make sure he's in the best possible shape and the best possible position to try to be on that team you're going to want guys who have that major international experience so i could see crosby and marshawn getting there as kind of those veteran leaders but you know at 37 it's going to be tough for sure for marshawn to maintain a level that will hold off some of these younger players who are in the primes of their careers. So that was the big takeaways from practice yesterday. Some guys coming back from injury. Uh, No Swayman, no Pasternak as they get the day off. They'll be back at practice today, I should say. And um, they're preparing for a big game tomorrow night against Calgary and some big games coming up on the schedule this week. And we'll uh, talk about what's coming up over the next few days here as the podcast continues. It is Super Bowl week and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with the W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers can join today and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. All you have to do is visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. The Bruins had their bye week before the All Star break. There's several teams who are getting the week off here over the next several days, but the Bruins are right back at it tomorrow night with a big game against the Calgary Flames. We'll preview this one more tomorrow, but obviously Elias Lindholm was traded, so their forward group is a bit diminished, but they still have um, Jacob Markstrom and Nett. Still a lot of talent on that team, not one to be taken lightly. It's Thursday where we'll get the premier matchup. The Boston Bruins hosting the Vancouver Canucks, and hopefully we see a Demko versus Swayman matchup there uh, just for the storyline from the All-Star game where Demko, uh, you know, did not want to hug. Who, who doesn't want to be hugged? Never reject a hug. Both teams have identical point totals. 
Both teams have identical point percentages. Uh, Vancouver has the advantage in goal differential. And they've added Lindholm, who will be, uh, you know, looking to make a good first run here with the Canucks. So that should be a, a great game uh, to watch on Thursday night. Then the Bruins will be in action on Saturday afternoon, a 3.30 p.m. Eastern game against the Washington Capitals. They're beginning here a seven-game homestand. So there'll be lots of time for some home cooking for them to, uh, yeah, start the unofficial second half very strong. Tomorrow on the podcast, we'll do our weekly cup check where we look at the top five teams in the NHL, where the Bruins rank among them. Wednesday, we'll do a mailbag as well as recap the Flames game. So please do send in some questions on the YouTube channel or via social media at Locked NHL Bruins or at ENC McLaren. Thursday, we will discuss this week's power rankings as well as preview the Vancouver game. And then on Friday, try to have uh, some fun, fun Friday. Hopefully get a guest up on here as well. And, uh, just continue to talk about our Boston Bruins. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. We had a couple of tough basketball games for our uh, under-12 team. It's okay to lose against bigger, better teams. Put in the effort. Put in the work. Try to learn something from those losses. Uh, our 11-year-old son. His team was down by like 20, 30 points. He's out there in the fourth quarter trying to take charges against kids who are like twice his size. He did foul out, but he had a great effort, and uh, you got to learn from those losses. Yesterday was beautiful. We got outside, uh, watched some, caught up on some shows, True Detective, Criminal Record on Apple TV. If you haven't watched that yet, I highly recommend it. I I've been watching The Sopranos for the first time. Finished season one. Looking to get into season two here. And uh, been reading this book called The Bullet Swallower, which is very, very good so far indeed. A year ago, we were in Jamaica. No such luck this year. But we press on and we uh, look forward to some Boston Bruins action tomorrow night. Subscribe to Locked On Boston Bruins to keep up on all the latest with respect to the black and gold. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Let's keep the conversation going on the YouTube channel. Drop your comments, discussion points, uh, questions as well, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them on Wednesday. Happy Monday, friends. Please do take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.